<sighs> Look, y'all. Next up, we got the top 10 insanely racist moments on Disney in Disney movies that you will totally forget about. It's actually um in cartoons too. I might put both of these videos in here actually. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just put both of these videos. Um or I make two different ones. I don't know. Cause it's in it's it's in Disney movies and it's in like just other kind of cartoons. So you know what I'm saying? So um I right, put myself in the eye. Jesus Christ. Alright. Oh, that was ill. Embarrassing on camera. Anyways. Um I've been seeing these, you know what I'm saying? I never I, I never actually watched it before. Um, but these are like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Cause just like not even just racist stuff, cause you'll go back and you will see like certain clips of like SpongeBob or like certain uh kids shows you thought were just so innocent. And now that we're like all grown and we just know about everything, bro, it was so many dirty jokes and stuff like that that just went over our head because we were just so young, you know what I'm saying? Even with the racist stuff, you feel me? We wouldn't even know. We wouldn't even know. We wouldn't even know. You know what I'm saying? But hey, how I feel about the racist stuff? Um, it's definitely fucked up. You feel me? Um, racist racism is not okay. Um, but me personally, how I take it, um, I usually just laugh. Like if a, you know, what I'm saying white person, white person called me the N word, hard R, I just laugh. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously you're mad. At that point, you know what I'm saying? I really don't take it that serious. You feel me? Um, now, if you're talking about my family or or something like that, then it goes a little bit deeper. But if you just call me that, you know, especially like on a game, playing Call of Duty, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's not my first time. It's not my first time ever getting called a race, racist joke. You know what I'm saying? So, but hey, man, let's see what it is. How, I How did we not notice these the first time around? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 insanely racist moments in Disney movies that you totally forgot about. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most embarrassing, anachronistic, or cringeworthy moments of racism that Disney would likely want their fans to forget or ignore. We're not passing judgment on the people behind the scenes at Disney here. As many of these moments were a product of their time, but it should also be discussed how many of them haven't exactly aged well. Number 10. Sunflower, Fantasia. Fantasia was certainly an early example of a Disney classic, an amazing combination of classical music and animation that still holds up today. What perhaps doesn't hold up so well is Whoa. a character included on the film's initial theatrical run. Her name was Sunflower, and she was a black female centaur or centaurette who's seen waiting on her white brethren during a segment titled The Pastoral Symphony. Sunflower is drawn with exaggerated black features and is a clear example of a visual stereotype that didn't need to be there in the first place. Perhaps this was the reasoning behind Disney's decision to remove the character from prints starting in the mid-60s. Number 9. Japanese Soldier Caricatures – Commando Duck it may seem strange today to think of cartoons as wartime propaganda, but this was actually a common practice during World War II. Commando Duck was oh. one such short by Disney, a cartoon that sees Donald Duck parachuting into Japanese territory for a secret mission. The short tends to focus its plot primarily on Donald's battle tactics, but there are plenty of racist moments, specifically with how the Japanese enemy is drawn. Donald's foes are deliberately presented with slanted eyes, buck teeth, and overblown accents. Oh, I beg my pardon. I bow my stomach at you. Very reverent. That's all right. Happy cherry blossoms to you, please. My boy, oh, 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 Santa's Workshop was a holiday-themed Disney short which, on the surface, is a harmless tale of Saint Nick and his elves getting ready for Christmas. However, early versions featured a troubling scene between Santa and a pair of dolls, as the toy maker is overseeing quality control on the assembly line. A white doll comes down a conveyor belt, says Mama, and gets approved by Santa. 
Then a black doll tumbles down the belt, says Mammy, and stamps her own butt, as Santa watches on and laughs. <laughs> word mammy was slang for a black nursemaid in the time of slavery and the doll's exaggerated features it's no wonder disney removed this scene from all modern prints number seven king louis the jungle book king louis is a beloved character from disney's adaptation of rudyard kipling's the jungle book and old king louis ba -doo -ba 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 -doo, that's me louis is a disney original having not appeared in kipling's original stories but he didn't arrive without his fair share of controversy King Louie and his ape subjects are the only characters that speak in jive slang, popular with black jazz musicians of the day. Richard M. Sherman was one of the songwriters on the film, and has been quoted as initially wanting jazz legend Louis Armstrong to voice the king, but balked at the prospect of potentially offending the NAACP with a black man voicing an ape. So, is King Louie racist, or is it all in the eye of the beholder? You decide. Number six, Arabian Nights, Aladdin. The American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee wasn't too thrilled with the soundtrack for Disney's 1992 hit Aladdin. They took specific umbrage with a line in the film's opening song, Arabian Nights, where the peddler sings, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. The committee saw this as disparaging towards the Arab people and complained to Disney for a lyrical change. The company did comply and replaced the line for home video and on new versions of the soundtrack. The committee was also reportedly upset about another controversial line from the song. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. But Disney decided to leave this one in, for better or worse. If I were as rich as you, I could afford some manners. Oh. Number five, Native American stereotypes, Peter Pan. Intent can be a funny thing, especially when it's perceived much differently years later. This should be most enlightening. Disney's Peter Pan is an example of this notion, as evidenced by a shockingly racist musical number with very innocent intentions. <laughs> when did he first say no? The Native American sequence in the film raises flags with the song What Made the Red Man Red, where embarrassing Indian stereotypes are the order of the day. Although the scene is light and bouncy in tone, the effect years later is rather cringeworthy in its execution, a blemish on what's otherwise a classic slice of Disney nostalgia. <laughs> Number four, we are Siamese, if you please, Lady and the Tramp. The intentions behind Peter Pan's racism may be up for debate, but it's a lot more difficult to defend the outrageous cultural insensitivity behind the Siamese cats in Disney's Lady and the Tramp. Post-World War II tensions are the only probable reasons behind the obvious Japanese stereotypes of Sai and Am, two villainous cats who sing this song. The twins are drawn with the same slanted eyes and buck teeth we saw earlier in Commando Duck, and their entrance is even marked by a gong, something that hampered Asian stereotypes in film right through the 80s and 90s. Number three. Shangan and the Alley Cats, the Aristocats. We continue with Asian stereotypes here, proof that negative depiction of such characters wasn't only limited to the immediate aftermath of World War II. See, I thought these was uh, mostly uh, black. Um, these are black racist jokes, but dang, like Disney going out sad, bro. They they been racist to every like, wow, bro, wow, wow. Nope. Asians were still being drawn with the same old oh, no, so eyes sad, and outrageous bro. accents in 1970, as evidenced by Shun Gan and the gang in the Aristocats. Fortune cookie always wrong. <laughs> Shun Gan rolls with Thomas O'Malley's Alley Cat friends and performs his part of the song Everybody Wants to Be a Cat with chopsticks and a buck toothed lisp. He isn't the only feline stereotype here, however, as there's also Peppo an amorous Italian, and the trumpet-playing scat cat who's modeled after black jazz musicians of the 50s and 60s. Number two, the Crows, Dumbo. The term Jim Crow was used to describe laws or regulations designed to enforce racial segregation in the United States. The lead crow in Disney's Dumbo is also named Jim and has received his share of criticism in the decade since the film's release in 1941. But I've been about Jim and the other crows are generally friendly towards Dumbo, the 
fact that they speak in stereotypical black slang could easily be interpreted as lazy or racist in their depiction of African American culture. The gang does get to sing the film's most memorable song, When I See an Elephant Fly, but this doesn't change the fact that modern audiences might see the crows in a very different light. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Blackfish. You be my man Friday. Fabby, you Friday, me, me. Fabby. What? You be my man Friday. Fabby, you Friday, me, me. Oh, that is racist. <gasps> That is racist, Mickey Mouse. Fabby, you Friday, me, me. Fabby, you Friday, me, I'm the Fuller Price Band. I work my way to college. Number one, Uncle Remus, Song of the South. Uncle Remus wasn't a Disney creation, but his depiction in this 1946 film lives on as one of the company's most infamous moments. Remus was a fictional character responsible for narrating classic African-American folktales. When he hit the silver screen, however, Remus and Song of the South almost immediately struck a sour note with audiences. For starters, the film never explicitly presents itself as taking place in a post-Civil War South, leading many to believe that Disney was marginalizing the impact of slavery. There were also a plethora of black stereotypes to be found, which eventually resulted in the film failing to receive an uncut home video release in the United States to this day. Do you agree with our picks? Check out the... Hey. How long is this video? If it's been more than 10 minutes, oh, it's 12 minutes. Jeez. I'm trying to figure out. Should I put this video in here? It is only five minutes, bro. Hmm. I would do like this. If y'all want a part two, comment on this video. Like the video. If y'all want a part two, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do the uh, five minute video. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, 12 minute video. 12 minutes long. So, you know what I'm saying? Made it too long. You feel me? But hey, y'all like, comment, subscribe. Comment from yet to next, man. Follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active at. We want to grind the 10K, man. I'm out.